Hello, everybody. This is Joseph P. Farrell with take two of News and Views from the Nefarium. On Wednesday, May 27th, 2020, I'm doing it early today because we've been having, where I live, just buckets and buckets of rain, and we're supposed to have rain and storms tomorrow, and I didn't want to take the chance that I didn't get today's news and views out, which is really tomorrow's news and views, but I'm doing it early to avoid the possibility that storms might preclude it because there is a very interesting story that I decided to do the news and views on just at the last minute because I came in here to sort through emails and look through stories and decided to decide which uh, one I wanted to do. And there was an email in my box about this story and uh, courtesy of GB. So thank you for bringing this to my attention because I think it's a whopper. But before we get to that, uh, there is a vid chat this coming Friday uh, at uh, 2 p.m. U.S. Central Time. As usual, I'll be in the chat room early for our pre-chat, what we call pre-chat, which is just where we talk about anything and everything. And then I'll be starting the uh, regular chat at 2 p.m. U.S. Central Time for the uh, members of the website. Now, down to business. Um, I've got some really wild high-octane speculation to throw out there with respect to this article. And um, <laughs> I tell you what, uh, it's, it's so oddball high-octane because when I read this article, I was reminded of a movie that came out in the mid-1980s, believe it or not. So we're going to go way back and uh, talk a little bit about this movie. The article that I want to talk about is titled Space Force Seeks Greater Autonomy in Report to Congress. This is by Ed Adamchik. Um, this is datelined May 22nd, 2020, so just about a week ago, about five days ago. And this was a United Press International story. And it's not very long. So I'm going to read uh, five, six, seven paragraphs from this story. That's almost the entire article. But the central part of it, um, I, I'm going to save for the last. So I'm going to skip around the article at the beginning and then the end. And then I'm going to read something from the middle. Because when you listen to what's going on in the middle, it's, I think, huge. And then uh, we'll get to... The high-octane speculation after that, and then the really high-octane speculation. All right. So beginning at the beginning of this article, here we go. Quote, the U.S. Space Force has requested flexibility from Congress to purchase and use satellites, saying it needs more agility to keep pace with adversaries. A 23-page report to the Congress from the U.S. Air Force, the current parent of the Space Force, explains an alternative acquisition system for the Space Force. Now, folks, if you've been following Catherine Austin Fitz or Dr. Mark Skidmore or all the other people talking about all that missing money, you're probably thinking, here we go again. Just listen carefully. Quote, the report released this week envisions an overhaul of the tools needed to require new space hardware with less reporting to Congress, allowing it to operate with more agility in the face of com uh, competition from other countries. And again, folks, if you're thinking, oh, my, missing money, the FASB 56 regulations, which in effect, according to Catherine Fitz, and I happen to agree with her, basically takes the entire federal government budget black. <laughs> Here we go. All right, skipping a few paragraphs, and I'm going to come back to the middle one. Quote, the features, and this is quoting the report now. Quote, the features outlined in this report will create a new space acquisition approach for the United States Space Force that is the envy of all the other services and ultimately enables the United States Space Force 
to rapidly leverage industry innovation to outpace space threats, unquote, the report said. It did not mention the Space Force, and Space Force officials said that they regard their own report as groundbreaking in its scope. And they're saying this after the Air Force submitted a separate report. Okay, so the Air Force report didn't mention the Space Force report. The Space Force report includes nine specific proposals to improve contracting, but does not include ideas to unify the several government agencies which purchase and maintain satellites for the intelligence community, unquote. Now, stop and let that one sink in. Everybody has their hands, or I should say their snouts, in the trough, and there's no unified overall direction, but the Space Force wants authority to go out and spend money without the oversight of Congress. But we'll get back to that. The final paragraph I want to read here says, quote, the three of the proposals require action from Congress, while the rest involve procedural changes within the Defense Department, unquote. Now, that's the article almost in its entirety, with the exception of that little thing in the middle that I've left, left till the last, save the best till last. Well, here it is, quote, and again, this article is citing the report, okay? Quote, Reducing space portfolio constraints via incremental funding, unquote, or expanded ability to pay for space systems without regular oversight or constant requests for congressional approval is a constant in the report. Let me read that again, quote, reducing space for portfolio constraints via incremental funding or expanded ability to pay for space systems without regular oversight or constant requests for congressional approval is a constant in the report. It adds that the delay between identification of a need and a go-ahead from Congress adds costs to programs. See, they're trying to save everybody money. <laughs> so in other words, we want to be able to go ahead and build whatever we want to build without oversight from Congress for the U.S. Space Force. And it's clear from the report that they're in a rush, and they're saying, well, we were in a rush because we've got all this competition and we're falling behind, okay? Now, I'm in agreement with the individual, GB, that sent this article to me. To me, it looks like now Space Force is teaming up with the FASB 56 regulations, and Space Force is going to be the new camel's nose in the door by which to claw all sorts of money, unaccounted for money, into the Defense Department to do whatever they want with that money. But I'm wondering why this now and why this in the context of that story, which everybody's sick and tired of dealing with, namely the Fauci, Lieber, Bale, Gates, or Bale and Militia's Gates Foundation virus story. Now, why am I mentioning him? Well, as you know, Bale Gates has, as we like to call him here, has been pressing this idea that, number one, everybody is going to have to get vaccinated to save the world from this thing. And number two, he is trying to get a vaccine technology allied to or coupled with a tracing and monitoring technology, which they want to put into your body. He's taken out patents for this so that they can follow you around. All right. So we've seen all the memes, too, about contact tracing with this story. So they want to get everyone vaccinated, tagged like cattle, so that they can follow around. Now, why am I bringing this up in connection with this Space Force story? Well, as I mentioned, there was a movie that when I read this article, I thought about immediately. I don't know if any of you have seen it. 
It's a movie from back in the 1980s, mid-1980s, starring Val Kilmer when he was a very young man. You can see a picture of him there. And uh, let me see. Um, it doesn't say the exact year. At least I can't see with my squinty glasses here exactly when this was made. I believe it was the mid-1980s. Yeah, copyright 1985, TriStar Pictures. So mid-1980s. The movie's called Real Genius. And the reason I thought of this movie is if you've seen it, the opening scene of the movie has a bunch of military and intelligence people in a room watching a demonstration of a system that they're trying to build out, which literally zaps <laughs> a man sitting in a lawn chair on his porch outside somewhere. We don't know where. We don't know who the man is. But he's sitting outside in his lawn chair, and he's a target of a space-based laser that simply fries him into, <laughs> into non-existence. And, of course, all the military and intel people gathered around the table are just, oh, yeah, this is a great idea. Trouble is, we've just got to make it work. And the movie is, of course, about these college kids trapped up in this program without their knowing about it, trying to make this super powerful laser so that they can go around and zap people <laughs> and fry them out of existence that uh, apparently are not cooperating for whatever reason. And I got to thinking, well, that's an interesting, that's an interesting idea, but how do you make an idea like that work? How do you bring in enforcement? Well, you implant everybody essentially with a GPS tracking system and you do it in the guise of a pandemic. And when you're talking about space force and needing lots of funding that they don't want any accountability to Congress, it kind of makes me wonder if this, and again, I grant folks, that's a really wild high octane right off the end of the twig conspiracy theory that I'm proposing here. But given everything else that's going on right now, um, I have to wonder if we're watching a bit of the agenda now being revealed. Um, I don't I don't put it past these people to start thinking in those terms because they want to move everything into the cloud, into outer space. They're going to have to protect those assets. And by the same token, that means they are trying to lock down the planet. And they're trying to do it for some reason we don't know. So I am very, very suspicious of this simply on the basis of this idea of no accountability. We've seen massive amounts of money go missing, and we've seen the creation of these FASB 56 uh, reporting uh, regulations. This makes me extremely skeptical. And it's looking to me, at the minimum, if you can ignore the Bale Gates vaccine, real genius part of my high-octane speculation here today, just drop that out of the picture and concentrate only on Space Force, no accountability and missing money. And what it looks to me here is they are going to be trying to use this now as the new way to cover their tracks for missing money, financial malfeasance, and quite literally harvesting of money. And they're trying to build out this space-based component for a variety of reasons, I'm quite certain, but tracking the population may be one. So we will see uh, where this leads. Um, I think it's a very important story, one to follow, and I want to thank GB for sending the article again because I literally was I, I literally dropped at the last minute what I was going to do, my news and views from the Nefarium to, to decide to concentrate on this story. I think it's very, very important. Uh, once again, we do have... The vid chat on Friday, I'm doing this early because we're expecting storms where I live tomorrow. So I'm doing this news and views early, but there is a vid chat on Friday at 2 p.m. U.S. Central Time. Don't forget the new book is out, uh, The Tower of Babel Moment. You can find it on the front page of the website. Just scroll down the website a little bit and click on the uh, picture of the cover of the book. It'll take you to Lulu or you can order the book. Some people have already uh, got it, and um, I've heard from a few people overseas that have already obtained it. So it's it's um, already out there. So if you don't know the new book, you want the new book, you can go to the front page of the website and click on the link there. 
And please let me know if the link is not working or anything like that. Lulu has changed their website, and they've been having some problems. I've re had people reporting to me that they can't find the book on Lulu's website. Uh, some people have ordered it and didn't receive it, so please let me know. But anyway, we will see you on the flip side, everybody. That's it for today's News and Views. Bye-bye, God bless, and we'll see you on the flip side.